report Hanging out the fish report Hanging out the fish report Hanging out the fish report Free latest news in high school sports Tune in to the fish report Don't need no bed, don't need no pull When you tune in to the fish report Hanging out the fish report Hanging out the fish report You got Craig and TK and head that deep tune in at the fish report Coming to you live Hanging from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio It's the Fish Hanging Report the Live fish Show With your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis Tune in to the fish report Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Fish Report Live. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Fissinger. That is Ken Francis. We're your host. Got the whole crew back this week in the sound room. It's TK and Heavy D out in Studio R, Kobe and Kearns, and Ken. Another fun morning on FRL, an action-packed morning. Absolutely, Craig. Happy Thursday morning to everybody. We're getting close to the holidays. You know, we're only like 12 days from Christmas. Uh, the stores are packed. The basketball gymnasiums are full, and there's a lot of excitement in there with high school basketball basketball Craig we're going to talk to one of the hottest girl coaches of the Fairlawn Jets right now and that's Gavin Cathcart really looking forward to talking to Gavin here in just a few minutes Craig and then we're going over to Versailles to talk some Versailles boys basketball and that's the head coach of the Tigers Travis Schwank yeah let's get right to it Ken you know you just said it. one of the hottest teams in the SCAR right now is the Fairlawn Jets they've got a three-game winning streak second only to Anna who has a four-game winning streak one big reason for their success is of course their coach and that's Gavin Cathcart we're happy to have him live on the phone right now and coach good morning and and uh, congrats on what's been a great couple weeks hey how you guys doing today well, listen, we, uh, we're we glad to get you on the show. You know, we kind of plan our weeks out uh, in advance a little bit, and we had Coach Swank from Versailles on the show tonight, but as well as your girls been playing, we had to squeeze you in here this morning. And uh, let's get right to it. You, you know, Coach, you start out the season 0-5, and, and then you win three in a row. So so something had to change. What, what, what gives? Um, I think the biggest difference is we finally won a close game. We had two close games. We lost to Bethel and um, Indian Lake. Then uh, we played Bakken's on uh, last uh, Saturday, and Lana and Kennedy made huge plays in overtime to get us over the hump. And um, they, they just, you know, our team just went out and won the game. Then it carried over to the Pickle game, and, and you know, that was a tough game. Pickle was a tough team, and we uh, scored 73 on them. Then, um, you know, our first five games, we, we played some tough teams. We played Anna, Army, Covington, and uh, – we should, you know, I felt like we should have won two of the games against Bethel and the Lake, but we just couldn't get over the hump in them games. Yeah, well, certainly that Bakken's win, a very exciting overtime win, as you mentioned. And then I want to ask you about this this, this Pickle game this past Monday. Uh, now, I, I've heard that uh, uh, your senior over there, Lauren Dungeon, made a couple of long three-pointers, and, and, and I wasn't there, but I want to hear about it, Coach. Tell me a little bit about yeah. those, those three she hit. Yeah. Uh, well, the first one, she got a rebound, and I think there's about 10 seconds on the clock, and we always tell our girls, you know, if there's time running down, try to get to the basket. And she made it to about the yellow line, and there's about four seconds to go, and she threw it up there, and it went in. Then um, on the second one, we got a dead ball underneath our basket, and there's about three se- I think it was like 3.4 seconds to go, and Coach Hickman's sitting on my bench directing traffic, setting up the old Christian Leitner play. And um, <laughs> he, he, I, I turned around and said, man, that, that ain't going to work. And <laughs> sure enough, I, Ashley uh, Rouse threw a perfect pass to Lauren, and Lauren turned around, and it was about at the, about at the um, volleyball line again, and it went in at the buzzer. Oh, my. So, oh, that's, <laughs> when the shots go in, Coach, you look like a genius, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been, calling, I've been calling Matt Coach K all week after that play. <laughs> Coach, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. This is Ken, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of exciting uh, stuff going on over there with Furlong Girls Basketball. You know, a lot of people knew about Lauren Dunn just coming into the season, but tell us about some of the other girls that have really stepped up uh, and have helped you during this three-game winning streak. Uh, Yeah, well, I mean, Lauren's been a heck of a player the last couple years, but, she, you know, we, we, we were missing the guards, you know what I mean? So we got Madison Pierce back, and she's she's a three point shooter, and she you know she's open, she hits it, and she she missed last year with an ACL injury, so we got her back. Um, Kennedy Spicer, she's she does all the dirty work. She is a tough player. She's uh, 
Well, we call her Boza because she just she's like Joey Boza. She just <laughs> she just has a motor on her. Then uh, we got a freshman, Lana Heath. She's she's our point guard right now. And um, you know, sometimes she looks like a freshman. Sometimes she looks like a senior out there. She, yeah, you know, she made some huge plays in the Bakken's game. She made some made I think eight for ten from the free throw line against Pickwood down the stretch. She's she's going to be a player. Then we got uh, McCall Hills Camp. She's a she's a pretty good player. She's un, she's really unselfish. I, we, we're trying to get her more shots. She's she's more of a scorer, but she's been doing all the dirty work too. She's rebounding real well, and she's she's our team leader. You know, she's our vocal leader. She she really gets the kids moving. And uh, you know, all four of them kids started for me when you know, La, or besides Lana, uh, Lauren, and the other three started for me two years ago when we went zero and twenty three and. And they all stuck it out, got better, and we're we're where we're at now. Coach, uh, you know, not only you got a three game win streak going right now, uh, you know, a couple other uh, instrumental wins this year. You know, you won your first league game since 2016. Uh, you had your largest margin of victory in 14 years. Um, you know, and and you know, you're coming into the holidays here. Your girls are just starting an eight game road trip. I mean, eight games in a row away from the hangar on Fairlawn. That, that's just a lot. Yeah. How do you how do you keep them motivated during this time? And yeah. and uh, you know, to say, girls, you know, it's going to be about a month or so before we're back in the friendly <laughs> confines. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we we kind of knew that going in, so we scheduled all of our scrimmages away. So you know, to get get used to the you know playing away a little bit. But I, I think out of them eight games, we got some very winnable games in there. Um, the girls are hungry. They, they, you know, they want to practice longer every day. They're mentally prepared. I mean, there, there's a lot of wins and in, in, you know on our schedule still. We're not done with three wins. So, uh, I mean, they're they're ready to play. Yeah. Coach, listen, hey, we got time for just one more question, and, and I know uh, I've, I've talked to you in the past, years past, and, and uh, you've been yeah. a busy, uh, not only a coach, but a busy dad, and, and you had a son, yeah. Joel, that was playing over there at Anna, just graduated this uh, this past uh-huh. spring, so uh, uh, do you find yourself having maybe a little bit more time now that you're not having to split <laughs> your uh, your hours between watching your son play and, and, and coaching the girls? Yeah, my Friday and Saturdays are open now at nighttime. Um, you know, I would, you know, you like watch your son play, but you also want some free time too. And, you know, it takes a supportive family to coach. I ask my wife every year if she's all right with it, you know, and uh, she always says yes. Um, you guys seen my wife? She's way out of my league, so I just listen to her. <laughs> I just listen to her. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, Coach. Uh, you're right. We did meet you and your wife uh, about a about a year ago over there at the Versailles. And, and she is, and she is way out of my league. <laughs> she is actually she is on your league. I have to agree with you. But uh, listen, listen. Uh, congratulations on your success over there. Uh, it's a great interview. A lot of fun this morning. Uh, I know we got you yeah. out of bed early this morning. So tell you what. Why don't you drive down, get your wife up, bring her down to the Waffle House, take her out for a nice breakfast this morning, and then head off to work. All right. That sounds good, guys. All right. Well, listen, thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck. Good luck to you the rest of the year. Thanks a lot for having me. Yep. No problem. All right, and that was the head coach of the Fairlawn Jets, Gavin Cathcart. First time he's been on the show, Ken. We need to have him on more. Yeah, I I, I agree with that, and and, and maybe uh, maybe we ought to schedule some time with him uh, back where we met him at the last year at the Versailles. Inn. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, well, let's go out to Studio R, check in with the guys out there, and, and just talk to Coach Cathcart, guys, and he's got him believing over there in Fairlawn, and that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah, it is believing, getting a lot of confidence in your players. The past two seasons, they've won. Fairlawn's won three games, and they've already matched that total. Great win over a Bakken's team who has a couple solid freshmen. So great quality win at Bakken's. I'm hoping this Fairlawn team continues to have a nice season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the names that he said, like Lauren Dungeon being the senior leader out there for him, they're getting quality wins after having some struggling seasons beforehand. And Coach um, Coach Cathcart, like you said, getting the getting the troops rallied up over there and just having a successful season. Yeah, and there's a. And today in the games in SCL, not a whole no no league games, non conference. Anna travels to West Liberty Salem. West Liberty Salem beat Larmy by one the other night. Larmy led that whole game until seven seconds to go, and Larmy hit a shot. And Dana Rose's uh, buzzer beater fell a little short for Larmy. So then 
uh, Anna Saturday came off a great win as well against Rushi. I think they established themselves as the second best team. Ella Dosek poured in 30 points, had a great game. We know she's a great player, will definitely be an all league selection. Yeah, Ella Dosek, you said she's a sophomore. She's a phenomenal player. Um, this year, coming off of a great uh, year last year as a freshman, starting for that. Uh, young Anna team, as well as the senior leader, Bria Cug. Anna had a phenomenal job shutting down Larissa inside and keeping their a nice guard defense on Jenna, shutting down the Raiders' two best scores and ultimately getting a great SEL win on the road. Yeah, yeah as, as I look at these standings, Kobe, what do you think of uh, Jackson Center Tigers down there in the bottom, 0-2 and 1-4 and and overall? Yeah, uh, they lost Olivia Clark and Kennedy Reese. Kennedy Reese being their defensive player and Olivia Clark, who now plays at Malone College, being their all-around scorer, she'd do everything, bring up the ball. And at times, Jackson Center would struggle to score. I remember Craig and I called a game with Rarushi and Jackson last year where Jackson only managed to score 21 points, and they lost their two leading scorers. So there's not a lot of a whole lot of point production. And even though we know Jackson Center teams usually wear you down and play great defense, they got to score some points. So I think that's a big emphasis. Someone's just got to step up and score for the Tigers. Yeah, totally. Um, with losing Olivia, Olivia Clark last year, she was their main scorer, and they're looking for maybe some maybe some offensive and defensive help out of Raquel Kessler, but I watched a game between Jackson Center and Rushi, and there wasn't a lot of help from them. I think they're just young and inexperienced, and it might just be a down year for the Tigers in the SEO girls basketball. Hey, Kobe, what about uh, Rushi and Coach Timmerman? They're sitting right in the middle pack at one and two, but you know when I look at their schedule, you know their two losses are, are to Anna and Fort Laramie. Uh, you know, I, I don't think the Raiders honestly have the talent this year to win the Shelby County League Championship. I think they'll probably finish in third place, possibly. But, uh, you know, they, are they sitting about where you thought they would be considering the strength of their schedule they've played? Yeah, I, I about expected that. I think Larmy, like I said last week, is the established cleared front runner in this county race, should win it. I wouldn't say they're guaranteed 12 0 because Rushi and Anna can knock them off any night. Um, maybe even Bakken's could even too. I've seen some great play from Bakken's. They had fair, they were leading Anna in the second half in a game I watched. So yeah, it, it's it's Larmy's league to lose, but Rushi's got some some great talent, and they can definitely pull it off. With they have a lot of experience and a lot of leadership back from a team that won a district two years ago and made it to the district finals last year. Yeah, me and Kovia both agree that Larmy's definitely the front runner for us, and I figured Rushi and Anna would be more of a toss up, but with Anna's way they played against Rushi it's definitely Anna in second I see Rushi maybe finishing third or fourth like you said I just don't think Rushi is competing at the level that they should be early in the season I think coach Timmerman and the girls got to figure something out and get something for him going Kobe let me ask you one more question uh, if I heard you right you said Bakken's could surprise Fort Lormy Fairlawn beat Bakken's so does that tell me that Fairlawn could surprise Fort Lormy um, I'm may- just asking. I'm asking maybe for I would have to watch Fairlawn play. I've watched Bakken's play as well, and I guess they play, uh, played a really good game against Anna. They've lost by similar scores. Fairlawn lost by 14 to Anna. So maybe maybe they could. I think Fairlawn can get it within about maybe 10 points if they're really on. But I'd, ha- I'd, have, to watch, I'd have to watch them play. I don't know a whole lot about them. I think uh, there's some guard play from... Bakken's that can match up real nice with Larmy. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's early in the season as well. Maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. They've got a whole lot of freshman talent over there in Bakken's. And you're exactly right. Matchups is what uh, plays into it all. Yeah, and there's and there's one big game uh, in the MAC uh, that maybe a whole lot of people won't talk about, but I'll be calling that game tonight with Dave Knapke. Uh, it's New Knoxville at New Bremen. Should be a very good game. New Bremen sitting at 4-1. and one. New Knoxville sitting at 5-0. and oh. New Knoxville's got a great junior post player by the name of Megan Jurassic, and Anna, or sorry, New Bremen has a really good one-two scoring combo with senior Kelly Naylor and Madison Cardona, a sophomore. So it should be a very good game. Uh, that replay will be uh, broadcasted on NK Telco sometime. So if you're an NK Telco watcher, please watch that. Thank you. Kobe, you're going to be a busy guy. You're calling that game tonight for NK Telco. Then you're with us here at Fish Report doing the Bakken's boys game, Bakken's Rushi on Friday night, and then Bakken's Rushi girls on Saturday. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to the action pack weekend. All right, guys. Well, thanks for that. And uh, it's going to be an exciting game. Season just getting started here. We're already talking about who's going to win the league, but a lot of season left to play, and we'll be uh, following it as it goes. Absolutely. And, you know, Kobe and Kearns, I tell you what, they know their stuff out there in, in, in the studio, and uh, they're just a lot of fun to listen to. 
All right, well, we're going to take a short break, but stay right there. There, when we come back, we're going to talk some boys basketball, including that interview with the sales coach, Travis Swank. Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Before the break, we were talking some girls basketball. You know, last uh, week, Ken, we touched on boys basketball a little bit, started to talk about the SCAL a, a little bit. Tonight, we're going to talk some MAC, and uh, certainly our next guest is a coach that we keep our eyes on over here in Rushi. He is uh, in his third season at the, as the head coach of the Versailles Boys Program. His overall record so far, 48-9, and nine, including an amazing 17-2 and two in the Midwest Athletic Conference. We welcome to the program now, Travis. Travis Swank. Coach, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hey, hello, guys. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, it, it was my first chance to, to see, see your Tigers play this past Tuesday when you were hosting Chaminade Julian. And, and, Coach, the first thing I want to ask is, is when I was watching you over there on the, uh, the sideline, you, you got this sea of orange behind you. And, and, and Versailles is a, little, is a little bit unique in that you've got your student section directly behind the bench. And, Coach, they're loud, they're proud, and they're a little crazy as well. Your thoughts on that? You know, our, our, our players and our coaching staff, we love our fans. We love our student section. Um, actually, in my personal opinion is I think it gives our players a little bit of energy. Um, our players really feed off when our student section is really loud, you know, jumping up and down and getting into the game. They're getting excited. I think it provides our guys a little extra boost, especially during timeouts and our kids knowing that there are, our student section has their back in the game. And it just allows them to go out and perform a little bit harder for them. Well, when I walked into the gym, Coach, uh, the first thing I noticed is I only recognized a couple of your players. Your, your, se- your mm-hmm. senior there, Evan Heaston, and, and as well as your, uh, your junior there, and Michael Stallman. And uh, one of your fans was standing in the doorway, and I asked him, I said, I said, I only, I only know two of these kids. He says, well, the, the, the same goes for me, Craig. He says, we're still learning over here as well. But uh, I want to ask you about Evan and, and Michael. Uh, has their roles, do they have a bigger role this season, seeing as how the, the rest of your team seems to be guys that were brought up from the JV squad last year? Yeah, definitely. They, they've been asked to do a little bit more for our team. Um, you know, offensively last year, they didn't have to shoulder the load as much. Uh, with us having our top three scores from last year being seniors, so those guys are naturally gone this year. So we talked during the preseason and everything and asked both of them to, you know, shoulder the load on the offensive end for us a little bit more. Of course, they're different players, Evan being a post player and uh, Michael being a guard for us, so they, they can score in different ways for us, for our team. But they also were asking them a lot more to provide us with uh, the leadership, um, you know, Having that varsity experience last year and gaining um, valuable time on the court, that is a tremendous asset for us, and we got to utilize it as best as we can. And, you know, they've done a great job so far 
um, leading our team in practice and in games here early on in the season. Coach, good morning. Ken here. Uh, appreciate you getting up uh, early in the morning on Thursday here with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the rest of the Tiger roster. You know, uh, we, t- we talked about uh, your two returners there, but uh, like you said, a lot of people don't know who these Tigers are. So, so who's filling in the hot spots for you this year? Yeah, the, the rest of the guys on our varsity squad are all juniors. Uh, first, we got Ryan Martin. Uh, he's our three. He plays a three and a four spot for us. Um, he was our quarterback this year, so he gained some valuable minutes there on the gridiron for us. But you know, he's played really extremely well for us early on. A lot of uh, a lot of scoring has come our way from him, and uh, it was kind of surprising to me uh, that he he shouldered a load on the offensive end for us. But you know, he can do a lot of different things for us on the offensive end, and he's been asked to guard. Uh, some of the best uh, players on the opposing teams for us early on in the year as well. Uh, we also got Austin Toner. He's our big postman. He's about six seven. Um, he really controls the paint really well for us. Um, is very good getting off his feet and athletic and can block a lot of shots. Still developing his offensive skill, but you know he's an extremely hard worker and uh, we really like how he's performing so far early on. And then we got Cody Nasker. Uh, he's our other guard for us that starts. Um, he's He's kind of our uh, one. If Michael's our our one A point guard, he's our one B point guard. Um, he he can control the ball for us and uh, get us out of trouble if they're trying to take Michael away. Um, and he's he's really slashed the hole really well this year and got some uh, nice drives. I've been really surprised with his ability as well, getting to the basket. Um, and then we got Nate Johnson. Uh, he's he's our lockdown defender for us. Um, he's been coming off the bench here lately. But, uh, you know, he's also capable of knocking down some shots for us, too. And then our last two guys, we have Connor Van Skyhawk. Um, he is probably our best set shooter in our program. He does a lot of good things um, on the offensive end. He's still working on his defensive uh, skills. But, you know, he, he is a good kid that works very hard in practice for us. And, you know, I really like his uh, shot-making ability. And then we got Hunter Trump. Uh, he, he's one of our greatest, greatest kids we have in our program. He does everything right for us, um, goes hard every day in practice. We use him as a post player. He's very undersized for a post player, but he goes in there and works his tail off. And, you know, I, I love our group of guys right now. Uh, we're, we're young and inexperienced, but we play extremely hard. And, um, you know, as a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. Coach, as you looked at your roster uh, this summer, actually, and and you know, and then when you when you rolled into the into the fall and when practice started, I, I'm sure you realized you, you had a lot of new pieces to the puzzle to put together. Uh, you know, like you said, you lost your top three scores. Uh, it was just a totally different uh, personnel set for the Tigers going into this year. How does that alter? Your game plan, your your day to day plan and practice from from your personnel standpoint, from what you had last year to what you had this year, as you try to put those pieces together and improve every day in practice. Yeah, I mean, you definitely as as far as your program goes, you got to match what you have as far as personnel. Well, uh, as what you have on your personnel side, uh, you know, we've got to make sure that we still value our core values which we have posted every day in our practice and never deviate from those core values but you want to make subtle changes that really uh, help out your team and put your best foot forward in a game um you know some of the things we did the last couple years aren't going to work this year and we recognize that and we've made some changes we've kept a few things as well that we feel like uh, are good sticking points for our program but you know we got to put our our players in the best spot possible and sometimes you have to make changes in order to fit your personnel a little bit better coach you know you're in the middle of a five game homestand uh you take the weekend off interestingly enough and uh you got a tough bell fountain team coming in on tuesday uh to play over there at versailles uh so you got the weekend off uh i assume uh, maybe a bunch of christmas shopping with your wife this weekend or maybe uh, a lot of scouting in the gymnasium what's it going to be well, I told my wife that uh, we were going shopping, or I was going to go shopping for her, I should say, but she knows better that I'm going to be scouting this whole weekend. So um, I might be able to fit in. I'm not too much of an online shopper, um, so I might have to squeeze in some time to get some Christmas shopping done, though. Hey, Coach, one more question before we let you go. And since we're talking family here, uh, you know, I think it was a couple years ago maybe that uh, there was a, a very neat article 
wrote about your family in the Dayton Daily News. Tom Archdeacon did a, a wonderful job of, of writing about uh, your daughter, who I believe was maybe two at the time, Sammy, and a, a heart defect she was dealing with. And, and I know us here at Fish Report, as well as a lot of our viewers out there, would like to know you know, how Sammy's doing these days. And, and I also understand your family might have got a little bit bigger this past September. Yes, yeah, we did. Um, to answer your first question, uh, Sammy's doing really well. She is four now. Um, you know, as of right now, we do not foresee any uh, major heart surgeries um, in the near future. Uh, her, her major one was done at Boston Children's, and um, you know it was a long, long process. But uh, she's she's doing well. She's a typical four four year old. You know, runs around and and. Sometimes drives her mom and dad nuts at times, but, you know, we, we love her the way she is. Um, and she also had to go to Baltimore for um, to learn how to eat since she had NG tubes and G tubes her whole life growing up. She never really learned how to eat. And that's probably been the hardest process for us hmm. to go through. But, you know, she's actually, you know, tonight or, or the other night she ate spaghetti just like me and her mom. So, you know, she's come a long way, and we're proud of her for what she's accomplished. And we... We also added another girl to, to our family, so my life is uh, dominated by the girls. So, uh, you know, I have to deal with that at home, but, you know, I wouldn't change it for anything. That, it's just awesome being a dad and um, having, having uh, two wonderful girls in my life. Well, listen, Coach, uh, that's great stuff to hear about your family. Uh, you know, you got a special time of the year coming up here with the holidays and Christmas. So from Fish Report, uh, you know, we, tell you, we want to tell you good luck uh, the rest of the season. Really look forward to uh, the big Rushi uh, Versailles uh, Crosstown shootout here, like we like to call it. We're close enough to Crosstown shootout. We can call it that And uh, in the middle of the season here. And uh, wish you and uh, the Schwank family a very Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas to you guys, too. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Coach. All right, and that was the head coach of the Versailles Tigers, Travis Swank. Let's uh, go back to the sound room, check in with TK and Heavy D. And, guys, you know, one week we got uh, TK or Heavy D actually on the East Coast, and TK, <laughs> last week you were on the West Coast. West Coast, yep. So well, heading what? out a little left, hanging left uh, last week. <laughs> were you able to, to, to tune into the fish report while you were out there? Of course I tuned into the fish report. Uh, I picked up a couple games while I was out there thanks to, uh, I think, a little fish report and uh, uh, scores broadcasting. Uh, so I, di I missed the live action, but I got it uh, via intranet. So uh, didn't miss too much out All there. All right. That was like 3 o'clock in the morning if you tuned into <laughs> us live out there. He probably it was early, did. but I got it. West Coast time. Well, I know you've been out of the area for a little bit, but but did, do you have a, a SCAL Player of the Week? Did you do your homework on this? Yes, I did my homework, and I uh, already mentioned her name a couple times here in the broadcast, and uh, I think a lot of people may have guessed this going in. Anna Rocket, super sophomore guard, Ella Dosek, who only dealt out six three-pointers on her way to 30 points against the Raiders, and as Kobe said, a dominating and a, a very forceful win for those girls in the SCAL and kind of making a statement right there. So, uh, again, yeah, the sophomore had a great game, not only offensively, but uh, defensively uh, held Rushi uh, guards pretty much not qu quite scoreless, but well under their average, had a lot of uh, in, uh, uh, steals and uh, rebounds and just all around a, a great effort by Ella Dosek over the weekend against the Raiders here. Yeah, it, it, it hurts a little yeah. bit when you're a Rushi fan to, to when something like that happens, but it's also kind of neat to see someone when they're just uh, in the yeah. zone. She deserves it. She played very well. Yeah. All right, and Heavy D, what could possibly be in the mailbag this week? Yeah, we dug uh, dug deep, and this one comes from a, a gentleman named Chris Kringle from North Star. <laughs> and Mr. Kringle writes, Dear Heavy, Although I probably know the answer to this question, tell me your top three Christmas gifts as a child growing up. That's a great question. Uh, probably going from top three down to one, uh, number three, probably the Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yes. And I still think that you, you, can, uh, you can buy that. Um, I think Walmart's got it for like $3. Um, so if you want to pick that up and, and beat the heck out of each other, that's a pretty fun one. Uh, number two, uh, it's lame um, in today's kind of standards for video games, but uh, we always had the handheld games. I had a Mattel baseball 
game where it had like four buttons and you chased a red dot around the screen yeah. and oh my yeah. I remember that stuff. yeah that in football <laughs> that in football yeah and then then it came out football number two and you could actually back the quarterback up and then you really <laughs> thought you had something but i can remember my top pick uh favorite toy as a child uh, for christmas uh, me and my sister were, uh, were into star wars at the time and we got a, a ton of just star wars figures and creature cantina and death stars and all kind of crap and I wish I had that in the original packaging today. It might be worth something. Might be worth a little That's money, good right? Good stuff there, heavy dude. Did yeah. you did you have the Millennium Falcon or like a Tie Fighter or anything like that? Because had, I remember uh, those those toys. We had a Tie Fighter and an X Wing Fighter. Nice, right. nice. <laughs> yeah. He that heavy D. He remembers that stuff. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. He's got great oh, yeah. memory. Great stuff, guys. Thanks for that. And that's going to wrap it up for us here this morning. Do want to say special thanks to our guests, Coach Cathcart and Coach Swank, for joining us, as well as the viewers out there for tuning in. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, everyone. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report, hanging at the fish report.